Okay, it's time for another one of my weird little videos again. Today we're going to be talking about the camshaft. There's my camera. So I'm going to get this guy. I'm just going to record the screen for a little bit. I have a whole bunch of web pages up and uh, some stuff to read and some stuff to show you. Should be interesting. Let's get to it. So, getting back over here to the computer. This is something called a Sankey diagram. And it's just a way of representing uh, the flow of energies or whatnot uh, through a process. In this particular case, this is going to be what happens to the gasoline as it gets burned in your motor. We've got usable power, some friction, some coolant, and exhaust gases. And if you look at this thing, 40% of your energy goes to the exhaust gas. And uh, you dig around on the internet, you can find some of these and do a little bit of research. And yeah, pretty much a typical internal combustion engine, which a beetle motor is, would typically throw about 40% of its uh, energy into the exhaust gas. So if you want to focus on the part of the process that, uh, you know, you do a little bit of work and you get a really big benefit, the place to focus is on that 40% that's going out your tailpipe. And there's a couple of ways to do it, but for this particular video, I just wanted to do the camshaft. I'm going to get my Carsey book out here, because he has a, an interesting approach. There's the camshaft. The heart of the engine, good portion of the secret to the high mileage. Good portion, not all of it, but a good portion. The reason it's a good portion is, again, as I said, 40%. 40% out your tailpipe. Anyway, he uses a webcam, grind number 101. And from what I've been led to believe, if you call webcam up, they can reproduce one of these for you. Uh, admittedly, I found it on a thread that's probably 10 years old, but I did find it. So I think they can do it. Have the gar gra uh, cam ground on 109 degree lobe centers. Uh, I'll get into that in a little bit. I would not do this, but that's what Carsey did. Four degrees of advance. Well, that's fine. He's just trying to move the, you know, the, the, the power band from way up the way up in the stratosphere down and actually it wouldn't be in the stratosphere it would be just um, higher than what he's looking for um, on his car he's you know he put in one of those freeway flyers and uh, so he wanted to move his power band down uh, if you're going to do a freeway flyer you could advance your cam um, my 73 obviously I didn't put a freeway flyer in it it's got a 388 ring and pinion but it's not a freeway flyer or anything like that so uh, but given that it was a genuine Carsey cam, that cam was built with all this stuff in it. So, it's uh, yeah, it's a stump puller. Anyway, what else does he have here? He doesn't really mention too much more, but there is a little bit of this stuff that involves the... Let's see, it says Claude's buggies. Yeah, it tells you how old this thing is. It's now CB Performance, experimenting mileage grinds. <laughs> and of course they mentioned a little bit the cam followers and uh, you know that I'm running hydraulic lifters I'll get into that later in my process to, of this video so that's what Carsey did let's go take a look at the uh, kinds of cams and whatnot that you can actually find and something else because uh, there is a guy his name's John post on the Samba and he's uh, the aircool.net guy and he's got some interesting stuff over on his website so let's venture to his website first and then we'll get to the cams okay here's John's website let's see if I can find the piece that we're trying to look at here uh, right up here at the top for a camshaft there are not a lot of good choices not a lot and if you dig around and play with them a little bit you can do okay most cams are designed for power this is true most of what you hear on the Samba is going to be guys telling you power stuff. Keep in mind this is efficiency and part throttle. It's really hard to think that way, but you have to get it into your head that you're talking part throttle when you're talking mileage. Lift is for power, not mileage. Eh, yeah, cut back your lift, cut back a little bit of friction, but as we saw from the, uh, the graph, friction is not hugely massive part, although it is not good for our motors. They're old, they do have a fair amount of friction. Soft valve springs, very important. Life of your motor, all that good stuff. Reduces friction, fantastic. 
super easy on the parts, fantastic. Mild cams, long life, no problems. So they've gone to CB Performance, and these guys, this article, more, it's kind of coincidence with what the Hot VW guys did and their uh, their cheater cam article, their mileage maker article, article that they did. So these guys already had a process in place before those guys um, published that. But anyway, they like the CB2231. I, I'll get into it, but I don't think I would do that one. Has the duration we want? True. Moderate lift? True. And then they say basically any really mild cam will work, and that is true. But the next thing they say, SCAT C20, we'll look at that a little bit in just a sec. I would not do a SCAT C20, but I'll tell you why. You could also use a 2229, 2230, the cheater cam. Uh, another great grind is the Angle W990. I would not do the W90 for the same reason I wouldn't do the SCAT. We'll get into that in just a second. Yeah, so anyway, I couldn't actually find the reference that I was looking for, but the uh, bottom line is that in order to impact that 40%, you've got to leave your exhaust valve closed for as absolutely long as you possibly can. Um, keep in mind, I mean, the power guys are going to tell you, no, you got to open it up, you know, you got to be able to vacate your exhaust gases and whatnot, but you're running it part throttle, you just don't need it. Um... In addition to that, there's something called exhaust gas recirculation, and if you don't get all your exhaust gases out, you still got a little of the bad, you know, some of that is retained, and uh, if you retain a little bit of it, it reduces pumping losses. So, it's just not critical that you pop it open to, to flow it out, and uh, a little EGR goes a long way, so, you know, you don't want to open that valve up. So, let's take a look at my camshaft sheet. All right, here's my camshaft sheet. Um, let's see over here. Norris, right there. These guys used to produce a really nice cam. But if we come back over here, and we see... Norris cams is no longer in business, which is a shame. All right, you'll see that I looked at powder. The reason I don't like powder is that, one, they're primarily a horsepower pile of guys. And uh, I didn't like the fact that I went to their website and popped up their, their price sheet. The price sheet was dated from 2011. I'm like, well, if you can't update your web sheet, like, you know, once a year, I would think. I just don't want to do any business with you. So, um, and remember, here's the SCAT, the C20 and C25. You remember aircool.net, John at ACN, he said perhaps the C20. But if you come over here and you look at, these are, uh, these are my headings here. These are the 050 headings, so you've got some, these are typically your timing events. Exhaust opening, you come down here for the SCAD C20, 44 and 45 for the C20 and the C25, which is a fairly big number when you look at the one that John picked out, which is the 2231, that's the 2231, and 2231 has a 33, so these guys right here, they're blowing their exhaust valve open 10 degrees sooner than uh, some of these other camshafts. So all the scat, the scat guys, I would take all the scat guys and I would chuck them and go, nope, that's not going to produce any mileage for me. Um, I really like the Crower camshaft. Uh, you know, if I was building a small turbo for mileage, I kind of like this guy right here. But if you come back over here and you look at their exhaust valve opening event, 47 degrees. Nope, not going to be really all that good for mileage. Comp cam. Uh, these guys make some interesting stuff. Uh, they're not really focused on Volkswagen guys. You don't really find uh, these guys mentioned on any of the Volkswagen sites, but uh, I would certainly consider these guys. 28, 33, and 38. Every one of these, I bet, is a stump puller, and every one of these, I bet, gets you some pretty decent mileage. Webcam over here, these are the only two that I like from webcam. The 127i, 127e. I believe this is uh, what they basically call a stock cam, and this guy here is some kind of a racing spec. I forget what they called this guy, but uh, a 35 and a 37, both of these guys are pretty decent. Um, come back up here to the angles. Um, I think the W90, there's the W90. I think W90 was recommended, but it's at 40 degrees. We can, uh, we can do better than that. We can suck a little bit more energy out of our fuel by getting down into the 30s with this. Okay, here's the 2280. This is the cheater cam right here. 274 degrees, 223 at 050. 
That's the cam lift. This is fairly high cam lift when you know you just go up one and you've got numbers in the twos and this is in the threes. Um, Lobe center 106. I don't believe that's written in there right. I think I found a timing card that was uh, somewhat in, somewhat goofy, but that's in the ballpark. But anyway, you come over here and we've got uh, the exhaust opening is in the 30s, but you can do better than that. So I think that uh, although it's a really cool cam, I don't think I would have gone with the 2280 to try and get 40 miles per gallon like the Hot VW guys did. Um, there's a couple of others that uh, I've looked at. That's not too bad, not too bad. 2228 is another one I th had thought about, uh, but nah, they're all up there in the 40s. But although there aren't many great choices, as John at ACN.net said, there are a few here, and there's a few down in this area. Everybody seems to like the webcam guys right down in there. And uh, let's take a look real quick at something else. See if I can get some of this stuff up. Check it out. It's a webcam website. But like I say, the only ones I liked were this one right there, this guy, and that guy. Uh, some people say they like this one right here, but this is just too many, too many degrees of duration. You're gonna, you're blowing off your mileage if you go like that. And uh, webcam's got a real nice, on an individual basis, they've got all their timing events. Assuming it's ground properly, they got all the timing events right there. Uh, I think that's their stock. These numbers are identical to stock, although it's not the same one. Hang on. And uh, let's see, I think this is the spec cam. It's a little bit different. Slightly different numbers down in here, but that would certainly work. Come back over here to CB Performance. Okay, and this is one of the things that bothers me with the CB stuff. All right, you might recognize these. These are timing cards. This one right here, let's zoom in on it. This is a 2280 and uh, 223 degrees of duration. You'll see that that event is six degrees and this degree, this one's at five. So it's basically, it's a straight up cam, or at least it's supposed to be. Let's go over to this guy right here. It's supposed to be a straight up cam, but this one's at eight degrees and one degrees. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Uh, 22, 2280. Here's another 2280. This one's at 8 degrees and 2 degrees. Uh, let's see. What is that one? 2231. Here's another 2280. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. We've got some weird colors coming off. But anyway, this is 6 and 4, so this one's not bad. But anyway, I look at that and I just go, okay, you know, CB Performance has got like a quality control problem. You know, if they can't get that cam to be straight up like it's supposed to be, that means when you buy that, you've got to get one of their fancy uh, uh, degreeing cam uh, cam gears so that you can take it and set it up to, to work the way you want it to work. All right, and for the rest of this, I want to talk specifically like, uh, if you're like me, you're running a hydraulic lifter. Um, it really restricts some of the things that you'd want to do for hydraulic lifters. Um, first of all, let's look right there. This is a CB Performance hydraulic cam. I've got an H on it. Uh, you'll see that it's got uh, not a whole lot of durations, pretty mild cam. You can always ratio that up with some rocker arms. That's just fine right there. Uh, exhaust opening, outstanding. Look at the duration on the, the lead up ramp. Okay, that means it's going to have a very slow, very gradual lead up. To, to the point that you get where you actually have the valve open far enough to actually have it do something. And uh, when you got a hydraulic cam, you know, the, the reason for these long ramps is uh, impact load. You've got your tappet to the tip of your valve, and you don't want to mushroom your valve, you don't want to beat up your tappet. So you've got these long, slow ramps to take up the valve lash. When you've got a hydraulic lifter, you don't have to take up your, your valve lash. You can just start pushing. So since you can start pushing immediately, what happens with these really long ramps, like that right there, is you push the valve open considerably sooner than what the uh, the timing says. So you'd expect to be in the vicinity of 32 degrees, 
actually it's going to be before that but anyway you're going to be massively out before 32 degrees so i would not do that hydraulic and additionally this hydraulic camshaft in general cb performance makes those things for water boxers um, they do work in a type one i think but they're they're not specifically a type one cam they're a water boxer cam so take that guy scratch it that's not something you'd want to use so getting back over here for hydraulic guys you want mileage with hydraulic cam your ramp values have to be very small and uh, you know if you go down here to the cheater cam 25.5 degrees nah I don't think cheater cam and hydraulic uh, lifters is going to work but um, there are a few if you come down to this is the webcam we got 18 degrees it's not terrible and uh, the comp cams are reasonable you know um, you're not you're certainly you're not going to lift at 22 degrees but somewhere between uh, who knows maybe 11 degrees earlier than 28 you'd be in the 30 what's that 39 degree range where you actually uh, take the valve off the seat but um, I kind of like some of these guys super mild not a whole heck of a lot of lift I don't know if I'd really go down this far uh, that's really little lift it's not a lot of lift, it's not a lot of, lift, a lot of duration. Uh, one thing you'll get with the hydraulics is that uh, um, just based on the way my car feels, I feel like the hydraulic lifter is actually increasing the duration slightly. So it's like it's made the cam ever so slightly bigger than it uh, than Carsey intended it. So, uh, uh, yeah, but I do kind of like the comps in the web. You know, they're not too bad. Skip the angles. And I don't really know if there's any of the CBs. The CB performance ones, they just have too slow a ramp. Um, this one right here, again, it's got a quick ramp, but nope, it just opens up too much too soon. So, um, seriously, I'm sitting down here looking at comp and webcam are my only possible, only possible choices. And I'm thinking about my 74 right now, not my 73. Uh, 73's all already put together. So, you know, I've got a massive overdrive on that car, so I can get away with not a lot of duration. Plus, I've got a lot of displacement, so I'm going to have a lot of torque left over, and uh, it'll work for me in my situation. You see on this hydraulic cam up here, uh, if you come over here, very light lift and very long ramp. All right, if there's something weird going on with hydraulics that requires a really long ramp and very short, uh, very very little cam lift. It probably has to do with something called bleed down or pump up. Um, I think that what these guys are trying to prevent is a bleed down issue. If you take a hydraulic lifter and you push on it too hard, they have a tendency to lose a little bit of oil. And if you can't pump the oil back in fast enough, they bleed down and you begin to have tappet noise. Um, so they give you a nice long slow ramp so that you don't uh, you don't smash it too hard initially, so you don't bleed down. And uh, if you've Maybe you've, out of the corner of your eye, you may have noticed that I did put a fat oil pump in my car. So I've got one of the big oil pumps. And uh, one of the reasons that I did it, I've got two reasons for doing it. But one of them is that I do want to avoid the bleed down. So I've got a high oil pressure to make up for the fact that I've got a uh, very fast ramp. I've got a fairly high lift, which is going to put some pretty, pretty serious spring pressures on. So, you know, if you want to do these things, um, in general, if you're building a mileage motor, you don't really want the big oil pump. But if you're going to go hydraulic lifters, I think you need the big oil pump. I seem to be, you know, I'm having pretty decent luck with, with uh, what I've got with the big oil pump. So, uh, I think that's a pretty, pretty good thing for you to do if you want to run the hydraulics with one of these non-hydraulic cams. And uh, seriously, I've dug around for some of these hydraulic cams, and there's not a single hydraulic cam out there that I would be interested in putting into my my two liter. So the solid cams, and you can do that. You can put a hydraulic lifter on a solid cam. So anyway, well, geez, I've had that stuff on my mind for a while. I've been accumulating these web pages here and there, and trying to stash them away at some point, either here on this computer or down there on my laptop. I usually keep my laptop in the living room. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to get that stuff out of the way, throw a video out there, give you something to think about for a while. If you made it this far, good for you. You're a diehard. Congratulations. Uh, I've got more of these. Catch you later.